So in this video, I'd like to continue our understanding of uh, systems of particles, and specifically we'll be discussing uh, the center of mass frame. And uh, with it, right, we should be able to understand a little bit more about total momentum of a system of particles and also the total kinetic energy of system particles. That's what I'd like to emphasize in this video. So if you remember, right, I said that there was a bunch of particles. Here they are. And we have some coordinate system corresponding to, so the ith particle has a position vector ri in my coordinate system. And there is also, we can, given a system of particles, we can define the center of mass, we can define the mass, we can define the uh, velocity of the center of mass, acceleration center of mass, and things like that, but we only did uh, center of mass and the uh, total mass. So imagine that we're told, right, that there is a point called the center of mass for the system. So here's my system of particles. And there is a center of mass. So we know that the center of mass position vector, Cm, is 1 over m, summation of i taken from 1 to n, and there's n particles of the ith mass multiplied by the position vector of the i uh, particle. So it's really a weighting, right, of m i to m, that weighting, right, of the position vector. So the weighting of the position vector gives you uh, the center of mass. And we know we can always convert this into an integral form, which is 1 over m times the integral of r of the differential mass element and the position vector is given by r over the volume of space that you want to integrate with. So we knew how to do this. Now I'm going to create something called the, so I'd like to create a new frame of reference called the, say, called the center of mass frame of reference. So this is the center of mass frame of reference, or simply center of mass frame. So center of mass frame is you take the point center of mass and construct all of your coordinates to the ith particle as given by, given starting from the center of mass. So for example, and I'm going to use prime coordinates, right? So prime is always going to mean prime means relative to the center center of mass. So basically I'm taking prime to mean, uh, so anything prime, so for example ri prime is the position vector in the center of mass frame of reference. Okay, Ri prime. And so we can draw an arrow for Ri, and so RCM, I'm sorry, plus Ri prime gives me Ri. So we know that this is true. Ri, the position vector in my original frame of reference is equal to RCM plus Ri prime. So prime is going to mean that I'm working in the center of mass frame of reference. It's the center of mass frame. Okay. So let's calculate. First thing we're going to calculate is let's calculate the center of mass in the center of mass frame. Okay, so let's calculate that. So we already know what the center of mass in the uh, in the original frame of reference is, and I'll write that out. So we already know. So let me draw this line. We know that RCM, well, this equation, and I just erased it. I wish I could backtrack and uh, erase this, but hey. So. Anyway, we already know that RCM, but uh, 
we know this. So RCM in the center of mass frame, because it's a prime, prime coordinate, prime uh, variable, is equal to 1 over mass times the sum of all the particles from 1 to n weighted by mi over m, actually, prime. But it's in the prime coordinate system. So this is basically the definition of a new coordinate system. But we already know that r prime i, right? This means that r i prime is equal to r i minus r c m. So I'm going to substitute this for this equation right here. And the total mass divisible by i taken from 1 to n of mi. Now I'm going to put ri minus rcm. So expand, we'll get a, a double sum. I'm sorry. Uh, the sum of two sums, sorry, the sum of two sums, uh, taken from 1 to n of miri minus summation taken 1 over m, taken from 1 to n of miRCm. But what is the definition of this? If you look carefully, right, this is the definition of RCM. And then write this 1 over m. The RCM comes out of this second summation symbol. And this is mi taken from 1 to n. But this is the total mass of mass. So RCM minus RCM is 0. So in a simple form, what we're saying is that the center of mass in the center of mass frame is equal to zero. Now, that seems really silly to say, right? But uh, this is, we get a conclusion from here, right? And that's a really important statement. So let me hold on a sec. So let me erase everything. So we don't need this portion right here. So it seems like a trivial statement, really trivial, that the center of mass in the center of mass frame is zero. So let me write that out. So you're saying that the center of mass, and let me write it out in terms of the center of mass. So this is really the center of mass in the prime or the center of mass frame is definition is equal to mi ri prime taken from 1 to n is equal to 0. And it seems almost trivial to write it. But what's really important about this equation is that I'm going to multiply by m on both sides. And what we get is a really important equation that says that in the center of mass frame, so if I multiply m on both sides, we'll get this. This quantity basically says that in the center of mass frame, mi times ri prime is equal to 0. So it doesn't seem so trivial, but uh, this statement right basically says in the center of mass frame, this quantity is zero. We got that because the center of mass frame is equal to zero. We actually proved it from there. So it seems like a trivial statement, but now I'm going to make another statement that let's take a derivative on both sides of this equation. If you take a derivative with respect to time, notice that the derivative of ri is the velocity in the center of mass frame. So that means that the if I take a derivative on both sides, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this, this dust rag is like killing me. There's a lot of dust here. So anyway, taking derivative on this side, we'll get the quantity i taken from 1 to n of mi of the velocity in the prime coordinate system is equal to 0. What does this mean? This means that the, I can write this as a, a statement, total momentum 
This is momentum, right? Mass times velocity. In the center of mass frame is zero. So this is kind of really important. We haven't really used uh, anything really important like the second or third law of Newton. We're just basically making statements. So we're saying that total momentum in the center of mass frame is zero. So what is the total momentum of this object right here? Well, in the center of mass frame, right? So the total momentum of this object, right, is actually, we'll do that in a sec. But uh, So it says the total momentum in the center of frame is zero. So this is kind of important. So let's calculate the total momentum of this object right here. It's Maybe it's moving or stationary. If it's stationary, right, what is the total momentum of this object, my marker? So let's calculate that. So we've already shown, right, so we made a trivial statement that the center of mass and the center of mass frame is zero, which is this equation, this equation. And if I multiply m on both sides, we get this new equation that says the mass times ri, mass and times ri in the center of mass frame, the mris, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, is equal to zero. If I take derivative on both sides, then we get the total momentum in the center of mass frame is zero. And so let's calculate the total momentum in a system, a system of particles. So when I say system, I really meant a system of particles. So We can say that the position vector of the ith particle is equal to RCM, the center of mass, plus RI prime. And we already got that uh, VI prime is equal to RCM. So if I take a derivative on both these equations, right, that's the derivative of the center of mass with respect to time. So this is the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the derivative of RIT, which is basically the velocity of in the prime coordinate system, the ith particle. So this is the velocity in my original frame of reference. And you're saying that the velocity of the ith particle in the original frame of reference is the velocity of the center of mass, which I can donate this by VCM, velocity of the center of mass, plus the velocity, the relative velocity of the of the particle in the center of mass frame. So now let's calculate the total momentum. So what is a total momentum of a system of particles? We'll call this uh, P. And P, right, is equal to the summation of M I V I taken from 1 to n. So be careful with this. We proved that the total, total momentum in the center of mass frame is 0, but that's not necessarily 0. So we're going to plug in now vi into this equation. And that is vcm, the cent motion of the center of mass, plus vi prime. So this is the velocity in the center of mass frame. And I'm going to expand this into M I V C M 1 to N plus hmm, 1 to N of M I V I. And this is prime. But hold on a sec. If this is the total momentum, I forgot my arrow and the symbol, so this is a vector. So my total momentum, right, is given by this. But what is this? The VCM is a constant, right? It's not related to the I in its index, so we can pull it out and we're left with VCM times the summation I is equal to 1 to N of the mass of each of the individual masses. Plus, but we already know that oh, this is prime. Okay, remember, we already know that the momentum in the prime coordinate system, in the center of mass prime, in the center of mass frame of reference is zero. And so we've got 
VCM times its total sum of the mass, but that what is that? That is the total mass of the system times the center of mass. So we can say now say definitely that what is the momentum of this object? It's stationary in my frame of reference, and if it is, the total momentum of this object, if it's stationary, is zero. I don't have to worry about all the particles within this object. This object happens to be a marker consisting of, of you know, mole-like 10 to the 23 number of particles. So we're talking about, you know, mole-like number of particles of protons, neutrons, electrons, uh, whatever weird particles are in here, right? Beyond that, right? So we don't have to worry about it. Those internal, those particles within the center of mass frame, right? Inside the center of mass, I don't have to look at them. Total momentum is zero. But is it true also that the kinetic energy of the system is zero? And let's do that calculation. So thus far, right, we have made a statement that the total internal momentum, right, in the center of mass frame is zero. And so if this object is moving, if I want to know what the momentum of this object is, I just have to get the total mass times the velocity of the center of mass, which is what this statement is saying. So the total momentum of a system, P, is equal to the mass of the system particles times the motion, the velocity of the center of mass. So that's kind of a really important statement. So this leads, lends to our understanding that uh, when we took early physics, right, and we took uh, our, your first physics classes and we said, here's a box, and we know that box, we, we treat it as a particle and say it has a mass m, it's traveling velocity v, but you're wondering, right, well, it isn't the box consists of many atoms, right, subparticles, and these subparticles, right, maybe they're moving in different directions, so how do I know the total momentum is mv? Now we know. The total momentum is the mass of the system of particles times the velocity of the center of mass of the system of particles. Okay, so great. Now we know that momentum, right? We've got an understanding of momentum. Now let's put it together with kinetic energy. So let's calculate what the total kinetic energy of the system is. So again, here's my original frame of reference. We're going pointing to a position vector for a ith particle. It's not the center of mass frame. And we have a position vector to the center of mass frame. And we have a bunch of particles, right? So here's our particles. And we know that the center of mass, the position vector in the center of mass frame is given by Ri for the ith particle is Ri prime. So remember, prime is actually, we're always going to be using it in terms of saying R Ri prime is the position vector in the center of mass frame. Okay, great. So let's ask ourselves what's the total kinetic energy. I'll use the symbol T to mean the total kinetic energy, mainly because I use T in Lagrangian equations of motion. So to remind you, I'll always use T for total kinetic energy and V for potential energy, but I'm only looking at uh, T. And if you remember, uh, the total kinetic energy of a system of particles in my original frame of reference is nothing more than mi, the sum of all of the velocities of the ith particle squared. And I'll remove the arrow. Ugh. Taken from 1 to n of the velocity squared. But we also know that from this equation, right, that the position vector of the ith particle relative to the center of mass frame is given by this equation. The position vector of the center of mass frame plus the position vector of the center of mass gives me the original position vector of my original frame of reference. If I took a derivative on both sides, we'll see that this is actually the velocity of the ith particle is the velocity of RCM plus the velocity of Ri prime. And we can rewrite really this in terms of saying that Vi, so I'm going to write this over here. And this is the velocity of the center of mass plus velocity in the prime frame, frame of reference. 
and this is what I'm going to substitute into here. But just a quick key note, you have to know that uh, v squared, any vector, right, just to remind you, a squared, right, is really the magnitude dotted with magnitude of a. Remember, a dot a is a squared cosine of the angle between them, the angle zero cosine. So the dot product is a squared cosine of zero, cosine zero, zero. So remember, if you remember the dot product, this is the dot product. So I'm going to do the dot product. So with this, I'm going to write this kinetic energy T to be the sum of I taken from 1 to N of 1 half MI. And I can now substitute this as VI vector dotted with VI vector. And then I'm going to substitute this or into this equation from this equation that the position I want to convert them is into the center of mass frame and the velocity in the center of mass frame. Sorry, the center of mass, the velocity in the center of mass and in my original frame and the velocity in the center of mass frame of the ith particle. So remember it's a dot product, because we're doing a dot product on both sides. And we can expand this further, and hopefully I have enough space, because, uh, yeah, I can always use that extra space in the corner over there. Okay, kind of. So this is now i taken from 1 to n, 1 half mi. And I'll put a big parentheses around here. So we're doing a dot product, and I'm going to do this calculation. So when we do the dot product, you'll get VCM dot VCM. And then we'll do a VI prime dot v VCM, but then we also have VICM over here, so that'll be like 2. 2 VCM dotted bit vi prime. You should actually do this a little bit slower. I'm just kind of speeding it up a little bit. But you should double check and make sure that I didn't make a mistake. And you should do this yourself on pen and paper. It's very important as a physicist, right, or as an engineer, to spend some time doing these calculations on pen and paper. So here is vi prime, vi prime and vcm. And then we have plus vi prime dot vi yeah sorry my eyes and primes they kind of look alike at a certain point okay so what is vcm vcm that's actually just um, so I'll write this next line so this vcm vcm is just the velocity of the center of mass squared the speed of the center of mass squared, and that's the sum of all of the masses. So this is just nothing more than one half m v c m squared, the center of mass squared. So this is the first term. The next term, right, is there's a two that can absorb over to here, but I don't really care about that. But uh, what I'll do is the v c m when I sum of sum all these terms, right? You'll notice that the v c m dot I can pull it out, and so we're left with the mi vcm dot i is from 1 to n of vi prime. And hopefully you can see this. So I'm pulling out the vi cm dot, so you might have to review a little bit of your dot product algebra. So vi, but this, oh, I'm sorry, I sh the mi shouldn't have been leave left out, so sorry, I pulled it out. The mi stays, the two disappears. But we know that the momentum in the center of mass frame, right, which this is, is zero. So this dot product is actually zero. And the last term, right, is just one half mi 
bi prime when you dot it this is actually squared taken from i is equal to 1 2 n and so what are you saying so what we're saying is that the total kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the center of mass so this is t representing the center of mass motion so this is the total mass of the system times the speed of the center of mass plus and this quantity, right, is the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. So this is, I'm going to donate this by CM prime. So basically the total kinetic energy is nothing more than the kinetic energy of the center of mass plus the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. So these are the, so in your frame of reference, whatever that is, right, so let me do some examples on this just to make sure you understand the idea. Okay, so uh, so this is an important statement. This is basically the total kinetic energy is the kinetic energy, the center of mass motion, one half total mass times the center of mass squared, plus the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, where you look at the velocities in the center of mass frame of reference. So this is the statement that I really want to make sure you understand. So when we did momentum, the total momentum is equal to nothing more than the momentum of the center of mass, the motion of the center of mass. But when we do kinetic energy, right, you're going to see it's the total kinetic energy of the center of mass motion plus the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame of the particles that are in the center of mass frame. So these are the two statements that we really need to work at and later I'll introduce uh, statements about angular momentum and torques and stuff but uh, actually angular momentum uh, not torques but uh, anyway so hopefully you understood this and I'll try to explain this and this is really important for us when we do calculations so with this uh, we can actually start working with Lagrange equations but I think I'll start doing that in another video yeah because I think this is a pretty long video sorry nearly 30 minutes yeah, so let me erase this and I'll rewrite it. So what does it mean? So it means the following. What's the total kinetic energy of this, this object right here? So you might say, well, the total kinetic energy of this object that's motionless, my eraser, my, sorry, my marker, that's not moving, right? The total kinetic energy T, that's why I'm using T, is equal to the center of mass motion plus the center of mass motion in the prime coordinate system. Sorry, in the kinetic energies in the center of mass frame. Actually, maybe I should use T prime, but I, I think I, in my notes, uh, I think I use CM, so... Uh, I'll stay with prime as the prime coordinates, uh, the prime center of frame, the, the center of mass frame is prime. But if this is motionless, right, what is the total kinetic energy of the system? Well, this term for this object is zero. Definitely, it's not moving. The center of mass is not moving relative to my coordinate system. But in the, in the center of mass frame, there are objects that are moving. There are atoms, there's atoms that are vibrating, there's electrons, there's nuclei that are moving back. Uh, well, I don't think they're moving back and forth. They're all fixed as a solid object, but they're vibrating. And that vibrational motion, right, will have kinetic energy associated with some particles going back and forth like this. There's potential energies and so things like that. So this term, right, this term, right, might not be zero. Most, it definitely is not zero. It's very unlikely that anything that has a temperature, right, above zero Kelvin, right, it, well, we expect no kinetic energy in the system. I'm oh, sorry, it, we expect a kinetic energy in, these, uh, in this system. Now, why is this important? Well, so if we assume you have a system and this internal, so this is the internal kinetic energy, that's what you want to call it. It's the internal kinetic. It's really the kinetic energy of these, of the particles in the center of mass frame. So this internal kinetic energy, right, or the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, right. If that's a constant, we can treat this as a constant k. And if you remember, 
in Lagrange equations of motion, right? So here it is. We have the Lagrange Lagrangian, which is partial of the generalized coordinate QA dot of T plus V, the Lagrangian, is minus the partial of Q with respect to T plus V. I'm sorry, this is T minus V. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm starting to do Hamiltonian equations already, which I didn't get there yet. So T minus V, that's the Lagrangian, right? So if we know that if we're using T and I substitute T is equal to T center of mass motions of a system plus some CM, which is my motion in the set, the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame of reference. And I know this is a constant. This constant, right, we'll just call it K, K. And this, this constant doesn't change. Let's assume that uh, when this part, if I drop this object, for example, right, that the internal kinetic energy does not change. It's possible that it can change, but if we assume it's not, it doesn't change, then it, it's a constant. So that constant, right, when you look into these equations, right, the, the first thing you're going to do is take a derivative, and that constant disappears. And so the net effect is that this becomes a motion of basically the center of mass motion of the system. So what you're saying is that if we assume that the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, it doesn't change, right, when we're looking at uh, the Lagrange equations of motion in our classical physics ideas, right, then the equations stay the same. So we just have to worry about watching these objects in the center of mass. So we did the calculation of Lagrange already, and Lagrange basically we, we looked at objects moving, and we always treated it as a total mass, and we never tr we treated the system as a bunch of pr particles like atoms and molecules and stuff, and we didn't have to. If we know that the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame of reference doesn't change in the motion. And if it doesn't, it's a constant. The equations of motion, they don't change. So hopefully you understood this idea. And uh, actually, let me give you an example of uh, finding the total kinetic energy to make sure you understand the idea now. So let's imagine, right, that we have two masses. M1 and M2. And this mass is right. The center of mass is traveling with a velocity Vcm. And in my mass, in the center of mass frame, I'm going to assume that M1, let's just make them equal because I don't want to worry about Barry center. So you have two masses, M1 and M2, and they're rotating around each other. But the center of mass, right, of the system, and they're a fixed distance apart, let's call it r, and their velocity, let's just call it vr for radial, actually let's go tangential vt, okay. So they're rotating around each other. Each one has a velocity of vt, and they're just rotating like this in space. And the center of mass of the system is actually traveling with vcm. So we'd ask ourselves, what is the total kinetic energy? Well, the total kinetic energy is t, the center of mass motion plus the kinetic energy uh, of the center of mass in the center of mass frame. In this case, the total motion of this system, right, it's rotating and it's moving through here with a certain speed, is the velocity of the center of mass, so that'll be the total mass, which in this case happens to be m plus m, the total mass of the system, times vcm squared. So this is the center of mass motion. So this is, we can treat both these masses at the center as basically some an object with a total mass of 2m. So here's 2m. And then we ask ourselves, in our center of mass frame, right, what is the kinetic energy? Inside the kinetic energy, right, inside uh, this frame of reference, each particle is traveling with a velocity relative to the center. And so we'd say this is 1 half m for the first particle, vt squared for the second particle, one half m v t squared. So we'd get that this is m, the total mass, the mass of each mass of object, right? m 
times VCM squared plus, then we have one half, one half, and so we'll get VT squared, uh, velocity in the center of mass frame. And so this is the total kinetic energy. So we always have to break it apart into two pieces. One, the piece that says the motion of the center of mass. And then the second piece, right, is in that center of mass frame, what's the relative kinetic energy relative to the center of mass position? So hopefully you got this idea. We'll be using it for uh, a bunch of ideas coming up. So the main thing that we have to understand is that when we're using kinetic energies, right, that we have to worry about the center of mass motion and also things in that center of mass frame. So hopefully you understood this idea. And I guess I'll make some videos next of uh, doing some calculations of uh, using center of mass and center of mass frames.